Hey there, and welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I'm so happy and thankful that you came to craft with me today. We're just going to jump into the video because I have some things that I know you're going to love. The first DIY is a Christmas memorial because at Christmas, I always try to find ways to remember my loved ones that I've lost along the way. And this decor will do just that. I have this 20 by 40 lattice frame that I got from the thrift store for two bucks. And right now it's white and dirty. So I cleaned it up and I took it outside and spray painted it black with my Rust-Oleum two times. Etsy is the place to go if you're looking for some kind of memorial Christmas type thing. And I found a beautiful sublimation print. You know I love to do the sublimation and it's best to do it on polyester. It shows up best. It says, when you believe beyond what your eyes can see, signs from heaven show up to remind you that love never dies. And it has the two cardinals, which everyone says the cardinal is a symbol of a loved one's visit from heaven. And you lay the image down on whatever you're going to put it on. In my case, it's just a piece of polyester that I got from Walmart. And I'm going to lay down on the top of it some parchment paper and just simply use my tape that's heat resistant. And you don't have to go crazy with the tape. You just put one or two pieces so it doesn't move and mess up your image. Then you simply put it on 385 for 45 to 60 seconds. And I just slot it in my HTV Ront machine that they sent me and it will do the rest for me. I get so excited when I do my sublimation because it turns out so beautiful and vibrant and perfect every time. And so all you do is just pull your drawer back out and take it off. And sublimation is a process where it automatically is dry. It's not wet or anything like that. It's a gas process that gets that ink right onto the paper. It's like it marries it or something. And I, like I said, it turns out so pretty every time. I get so excited when I lift that paper up. And I want you to look at how beautiful this is. Except for the fact that this was my first one and I forgot to mirror it. <laughs> so I went and had to go totally redo that process and get it mirrored. But we got her fixed. I just have a piece of cardboard that goes in the backing and I laid this down to see what it looked like. I had just simply painted, like literally spray painted that cardboard white because we want that background to be nice and white and not that brown color showing through our print here because the polyester is very thin. So when I first laid it down, I thought that I was going to put some glue on it to hold it. And when I first put my little bit of glue down, it was kind of a yellowy brown color and it made me so mad after all this hard work and I was like no 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 we can't do that so I just took my Loctite spray adhesive and sprayed it down really good and laid it right down over the top of it and it stuck perfectly then I just simply go around and cut off any of the extra excess that we don't need. I am going to put some hot glue on the back of it just to hold it down, but we didn't need that much. So I just flipped it over, put a little bit of hot glue down, and glued it down enough to where it's going to stay in place. Then after I got everything in place, I went ahead and put the back back on it it had four screws in the back and then you know like a hanger and i just simply put it back in there and this is what we got and just look how gorgeous this is i knew that black was going to be the right color to paint my frame so i've got two of these little they're little picks that i get off of amazon and they're little um, red berries and pine and I'm going to put two up in the top left corner and two in the bottom right corner because I just think it doesn't need much it's so beautiful the way it is then when I had got all this glue together I took a small paintbrush and a little bit of my vintage linen by DIY paint which is just an off-white color and I went over the pine cones and just a very little bit on the pines and sprinkled a little bit of that diamond glitter dust that I have 
and I took one of these small pre-made bows that I get from Walmart and it's got like a bread tie on the back of it and I just tied it in to the back of that lattice picture frame and surprise, surprise, I put two buttons in the middle and I think this is gorgeous. It is my favorite Christmas project that I have made all year. I hope you like it. Guess everything's just right But I'll be wishing you were here with me All over Etsy, you see all these cute little reindeers that they're making, and I put my own spin on it. I've got a piece of wood that's a foot tall. It's about two inches thick. It's really just an old piece of scrap wood, and I took it outside, and I sanded it down really good. And then I brought it back inside, and I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm going to go over it real quick with this sponge brush, and then just wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. After that first project, I tried to do one that was a little more on the light and, you know, cheerful side of things. But at Christmas time, I just can't help but think about our lost loved ones that have gone on before us and that aren't here anymore. I try to make a good Christmas and good memories for the kids and stuff, but they're always in the back of my mind. So we're going to keep moving on here. And the next thing that I did is I took this color called Imperial by Home Decor. It's a folk art chalk paint. And I've got this little, I don't know, like a little wood round, I guess you would call it. It's about three inches wide. And we're just going to paint the inner part, that Imperial Red. Then I'm going to take my Vintage Linen, which is the off-white color by DIY Paint, and I'm going to make just like two little shiny areas there on the side of his nose. Little shinies. Now I take my Vintage Linen and a small um, pointy little brush, and I'm going to make his eyes. And y'all, I am no artist. I can mess up simple little eyes. I'm not kidding you. So I just did them white. And I made sure that I made them big enough where they're going to be big old cutesy little eyes. And then I took that red nose and I just put a lot of glue on it. And I stuck it right down on the bottom of my piece of wood. And by the way, this stands up by itself too. I took the color rich black and I made his eyes. And then I made little eyelashes up at the top. And I couldn't help but to notice on all the other reindeer that I've seen, nobody put ears on them. And I was like, reindeer have ears. So I took little pieces of burlap and cut triangles, and I just simply glued them like a little roll at the bottom. And that way, it looks like little ears. And I'm just going to take my little electric stapler, and I'm going to staple them to the very tippity top of his head. I'm just a little out of frame there, but I put them on the very top. I've got these cute little ornaments that I found at Walmart, y'all. And I just use my wire cutters and cut them off. And they're little curlies. They are so perfect for his antlers. I noticed a lot of the others were using sticks, but I thought these were amazing. And they're a good change up. So I just used my electric stapler and I stapled both of these to his little head. And I liked the ones better that had the little red pit berries in them because I just thought that they gave it a little whirl, I guess you could say. A little something, something. You know what I mean? Then to hide those staples, I put a lot of hot glue down and I put some Spanish moss so it would look like little curly whirly hair. Then I just curled a couple pieces of raffia up to make like a little makeshift bow and I cut the ends of it open so it would be kind of flippy everywhere and I just glued that right in the center and I didn't think this guy needed anything else. I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think about him. Then you know it's Christmas when the snow starts to fall 
then you know it's Christmas for the children above all. Then you know it's Christmas. Cause Santa's on his way. We're standing under the mistletoe. And then it's Christmas Day. The joyful times we wish. Now this last one is a retro Christmas, and I was looking around Etsy, and I saw all these old retro-looking tin cans, and I got a little spin on this one. I've got this huge tin can that my husband brought home from a little convenience store where they do, like, nachos and stuff like that, so I just took all the paper off of it. And if you ever work with any of these tin cans and you can't get that paper off, just use your um, heat, some heat, like a hair dryer or your little heat gun, and you can wipe it right off when you heat that glue up. Okay, I've got my vintage linen, that off color of DIY paint, and I'm gonna, first I started painting this, and then I was like, what am I doing this for? And then I took it outside and just gave it some spray paint, and I like to use the Rust-Oleum two times matte white. Anytime I have a chance to spray something over painting, I'm all in. I've got the most beautiful piece of rice paper. I got it from Milton's daughter. My friend Lori is the owner there. So if you guys need any craft supplies, go check out Miss Lori at www.miltonsdaughter.com and use the code CraftyCathy10 for 10% off. All I did was lay this down and saw where it needed to go, and I just wet the edges and slightly ripped it off. Now, when you're doing any kind of decoupage, you don't want straight edges. You want to tear your edges a little bit like that, and try to get close to the image if you need to, but on this one, I wanted to save the little hollies up at the side. And I like to use the DIY Liquid Patina. It's like Mod Podge, except for it's thinner. And I just put some of that down on my can and laid this down. The thing about rice paper is it doesn't wrinkle, or it's harder to wrinkle than, you know, napkins are so thin and they wrinkle easy. The decoupage paper does not. And I absolutely love this rice paper. It's amazing. I think this is Decoupage Queen brand. But I just put a little bit of that liquid patina down. You don't need much. And it just sticks right on there. And then once this dries, I am going to put another coat over the top. But for now, I'm just going to let it dry. And for some reason, I wanted to do this in slow motion and didn't know it. But I'm going to try to speed it up so it doesn't take so long for you. I put down a piece of foam, just a little square. And then I just take some of these white rocks that I have left over. They're from the Dollar Tree. Because you want it to have a little weight to it so it's not top heavy and falls over. And then I'm going to take my little finger sander. It's a little zipper sander, I think is what it's called. Finger sander. I get this from Amazon, and it's in my Amazon store. It's the most amazing sander that I've ever used. I love it, and it was out of stock for a while, but I think it may be back in. Just check under my section that says crafting must-haves. So I take another piece of foam and size it up to how it's going to lay in there, and then I stick it down in there. And then I stuff another piece down in the front so we can have this thing with a lot of foam in it for some flowers. This turns out so gorgeous, y'all. It's so pretty. And so after I got all of the foam in there, I took this little thin ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going around the top. I'm sorry this is not the best view from right up above, but I just went around the very top and used my little finger sander to go around that very rim of that top of that can. And then I'm also going to go around the bottom with that same ribbon. It's though I think it came out at Valentine's Day, but I think it looks beautiful for Christmas. And my little decoupage paper almost went all the way around this, but not quite. And then there's a little spot in the back, and so I thought, well, it's no big deal. 
I'm going to scuff up the back of this anyways with my finger sander because I like the way that that looks. And I went all over the tin can and scuffed it up. Then I moved the location of my camera so it would be a little bit better for you guys to see this instead of being right over it. We're going to put down some flowers. I've got these picks that came from the Dollar Tree, and I have two of them. They have beautiful little silver ornaments in them and a pine cone, and I just thought they would be perfect. And I stuck this right down in the center because I want those little ornaments to be kind of the center focus of my flower up above. Next, I'm going to take some of these cedar picks that I get from Amazon, and they're kind of just going to be a filler, if you will. So I'm just put two of them in the back, and you always try to put your tallest floral pieces in the center, and then you just kind of go downward as you go out on the sides, if that makes sense. But I try to put the taller pieces in the back, and of course, the smaller pieces go toward the front. And so I just put that everywhere to fill it in. I've got these beautiful red flowers that came from Lord knows where. I have no idea. But when I put one flower down on one side, I always try to match it up and put one in the exact same spot on the opposite side just like these two flowers that I put in. And they're different from the first ones because I like to put a mixture of different flowers in. And then this one is from Walmart. It's just a little pine pick and it's got a pine cone on it. I thought with all that cedar, I needed to break it up with some more pine. I like to put several different types of florals in there instead of all the same because it gives it a little bit more interest if you ask me. And then this is a pick that came from Walmart, and it's just a little pine pick, and it's got like a little squiggly red thing that sticks out the top of it, and I just think that that's adorable, and it gives it a little bit more interest there. Next, I'm going to add this little pick that I got from Walmart, and it's got like three or four little pine cones on it, and I just did that to kind of break up the monotony so it's not all the same, just a little bit more added interest. I'm going to take another one of those small picks that I get from Amazon. That's the pine and the couple of little berries and one or two little pine cones. I cut off the bottom part of the wire so it wouldn't be so long. And I added it to the middle of one of these little pre-made bows that I buy at Walmart. I just glued it right to the center and then straightened my bow up. And on the back, it's like a little bread tie. And I make sure it's tied really well, but then I clip off the excess. And I just dovetailed the bottoms of my little bow here. And I made it kind of short because the place I have to put it, I didn't want it to get in the way of that beautiful picture on my can. I love anything retro and vintage for Christmas, which brings me to my question for the giveaway. And it's, what's your favorite type of Christmas decor? Is it traditional? Modern? You tell me. But I'm going to take a little bit of my Mod Podge and I'm just going to put it all over the berries and the pine cones and add some of that... Um, diamond glitter that I get from Walmart and this is the type that it is and it's gorgeous for Christmas and I absolutely love this glitter and I love to use it on all my projects for Christmas so I just kind of put Mod Podge all over the front of my little tin can and I'm just sprinkling that beautiful extra fine glitter all over it and then I'm going to take some of that faux snow and I'm just going to sprinkle it in very lightly, kind of on the top of the pine, so it looks like a little bit of snow had freshly fallen on it. Then I'm going to take a skewer, and I'm going to glue my little bow to the skewer so I can just pop it right down inside amongst all those flowers, and it'll stick up and out. Then for the very last step, I took just a little bit of polyfill, and I just placed it all around the top to cover up that foam so you can't see it. And it just looks like a little bit of snow at the top. I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think about it. Something 
My first one is a Christmas memorial. Now, Christmas is a time of joy and family, but a lot of us that have lost family, especially throughout this year, it's going to be kind of hard, and I just wanted to make something to memorialize them. And so I got this little house from the Dollar Tree, and all I'm doing is taking that little wood piece off of the top, and that piece that says love lives here is basically just paper over the front and so I just ripped off most of it that I could. We're going to lay this piece of scrap paper down that I have. It's some cardstock that came out of a package of paper off of Amazon and it's in my Amazon store if you want it but I just traced the shape out and then I cut the shape out so I can stick it on my little house. I actually have several different projects that are like Christmas memorials that I'm going to be doing throughout this season. I should have probably put them into one video, but I couldn't wait to make this one. I thought it was so pretty, and I never would have thought I'd be making it under the circumstances of losing little Savvy. And so I put a little bit of the glue stick on there and laid it back down, and then I'm just taking some antique wax, and I painted the top part with my antique wax, and I just wiped off the excess, and I basically am just going to glue it right down over the top here. I've got this beautiful poem that I just printed out on cardstock. It's Christmas in Heaven. What did they do? They come down to earth to spend it with you. So save them a seat, just one empty chair. You may not see them, but they will be there. And I think this is so beautiful. I mean, it says everything right there, you know. And so I put my glue stick on the back of it, and I'm just going to stick it down on the front of my house here. Then I just take that little piece of wood that goes on the top, put a little bit of hot glue on it, and I popped it right back on where it belongs. I'm going to take one of these little makeup, like, um... They're kind of like a makeup shading type brush. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. I got mine off of Amazon. I just put a little bit of the antique wax on there and got the excess of it off on a paper towel because I'm very lightly going all over this with my antique wax to make it look kind of vintagey. I just have a preference for things that are old and worn and rustic looking. I really think that's pretty. Then I just went around the rest of the house with the antique wax. Since I did the roof that color, I thought the rest of the house looked good with that being on the perimeter there. Now I'm going to take one of those like oval shaped wood rounds that comes from the Dollar Tree. And this one may have came from Walmart, but I think it was Dollar Tree. You can get them at either place. I think they're only 98 cents at Walmart. But one way or another, we've got this little oval round, and I'm just putting my antique wax on it and taking the excess off with the baby wipe. I'm taking this very, very small piece of fabric, and I'm very carefully putting a little bit of hot glue down one side of it, and then I'm going to fold it over, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the exact same thing down the other side, and just kind of curl it inward because I'm just wanting to make the shape of a very small pillow. Now, if you do this, just be careful not to burn yourself. I tried to use that little spatula, but I always seem to end up burning myself no matter what I do. And then I'm taking a little bit of wood glue, and I'm going to pop my house right down on the back part of this oval. And I had a company send me an amazing tool. It's a laser engraver, and you can make things out of wood and I made this little chair. I'm going to introduce this very soon. It's called the X-Tool M1. I'm very excited about it. Imagine how much money this is going to save me because I buy so many little wood pieces. But it's a little rocking chair, and it actually rocks. It's five inches tall, and I just made it from uh, the board, the basswood board that comes with that little machine. It's amazing. But I glued it down, and I'm going to stick my little pillow down there. I've got one of these little bottle brush trees from Walmart. That's $1.28. I'm going to stick a little light down there. But I'm not gluing the light down because you have to flip it on underneath. I've got these little picks that I got off of Amazon, and they are in my Amazon store. It's just a little small piece of, like, 
a pine and it's got two little pine cones and some berries and I'm going to glue that in the very front and like I said that little light I'm not attaching it down because that way you can flip it on and off as you want. I've got this little wreath it's actually a tiny little ornament and it came from Hobby Lobby and I just found it in my stash from last year. I'm just cutting off the little hanger pieces and I actually cut off that little red bow that was on it because I wanted to use one of my tiny little bows that I got from Amazon. And you know, I've been using these little red and black ones and the little white and black ones because they're rustic looking. I really like them. I just clipped my bow down a little bit and glued it right back where that other one was. And then after that, I'm gonna take that little wreath and glue it right in the center part of my house. And to finish it off, I took a very small little red bird that came off of one of those tiny ornaments from Walmart and I stuck it on the chimney, but I didn't glue him down yet because I want you guys to let me know if you like it better with or without that red bird. And I have pictures of both of them. Let me know what you think about this first DIY. It's falling down, guess everything's just right. But I'll be wishing you were here with me Everywhere I go is Christmas A town filled with wonder and delight The season to rejoice brings everybody close But I'll be On the next DIY, we're going to make a beautiful tree with this styrofoam cone and some wood biscuits, the furniture biscuits. So first I take my cone and it is one foot tall. I got it from Hobby Lobby and I'm just taking some green chalk paint and I'm just going all around this. You won't be able to see this white part, but just in case any of it peeks through those wood biscuits, I don't want you to be able to see it. So I just went over it with a quick green coat of this paint. I ordered my wood biscuits off of Amazon. They were cheaper. You can get them at any hardware store also. It took two packs of 50 and they're number 20. That's the size of these, but this is what the little biscuits look like. And all I'm going to do is start off on the bottom. I'm going to go in like a, a circle or make a line around the bottom. I put hot glue all up my biscuit and you don't want it to go past the very bottom because you want it to be able to stand up on its own. So you just go all the way around this bottom part. And this is really easy to make. It just took just a little bit of time, but not too much. And then when you get your first line finished, you're gonna go right up above it up just a little bit and in between the two below it and that's where you're going to glue the next one just make sure that you get it in between and you're going to stick it mostly on that styrofoam but it's also going to stick on the two that's underneath it because you want it to grab on at the top of that styrofoam for the shape that we're wanting and like i said you just go around in another line up above it in between the two underneath, and you're just gonna glue it mostly to where it's on that styrofoam. It's probably gonna make a whole lot more sense for you just to be able to see what I'm doing than for me to explain it, cause some things are just kinda hard to make a lot of sense out of. And I made a post the other day for those of you that may not have seen it, we lost Sabby last week, and I've tried to make a post a million times to tell you guys, and for a while I just couldn't even talk about it, and I still am not ready to even talk about it honestly, but I thought that all of y'all needed to know because he's such a big part of this channel, and I have subscribers that absolutely just live for Sabby and just love him to death, and I just wanted to let you guys know that he did pass away last Saturday, and uh, it's been really hard on our family. But like I said, when I get a little bit more, I guess more time, I don't know, I'll be able to talk about it a little bit more. But right now it's still too fresh and it's just 
too real and we're just all trying to get through the day and learn how to live without him being here because he's been such a part of us for so long. Here we are at the top of the tree and I slowed it down just a little bit so I could show you kind of what it's supposed to look like when you get to this point. Like I said, it's very easy. You're attaching it mostly to that styrofoam and you want it to have this shape when you get done. Now that we're finished with our tree, I got one of those wood little chunky round ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I'm using this Home Decor brand chalk paint and it's, I can't remember the name of it. It's like evergreen pine or aged pine maybe, but it's a green chalk paint. I'm going to paint this with that and we're going to put our tree on top of it because I just felt like it needed something besides just sitting down. And you wouldn't believe how heavy and so, like substantial this tree turned out. I also ran that chalk paint over the biscuits really good and I had to give it two coats just to cover it up really well. Now this chalk paint's a great chalk paint, but it's a little bit thinner than your average chalk paint. So I went over this two times to get a good full coat on my tree. Some people may think that it's easier after you do each row to go ahead and just paint it then, but I really didn't have any problems getting in between my biscuits. There were just some areas I kind of had to pounce it a little bit more to get up underneath where the little flap above it was. And here I've got, it's just a little piece of wood. It's from a maybe a chair or a table leg. I'm really not sure. And I'm going to paint it with my antique Waverly wax. And then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with like a baby wipe. Now I'm going to take my Starbond super glue and the accelerator to get this to stick. This is a medium thick hold and it's a really good you just need to put a little bit of that down and then i put the accelerator on the little round the little green round there and i stuck those together and after 15 seconds you've got a perfect permanent hold and then i'm going to put a little bit of the starbond glue on the green wood round here and a little bit of hot glue spray my accelerator on the bottom of my tree and put those together and it's going to make a perfect, beautiful stand. And this is what our tree is going to look like so far. Then I'm going to take my DIY white wax. I'm going to go all over my tree. And then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. I'm going to use some of those string lights that I get from Amazon, and they are in my Amazon store, and they are absolutely my favorite little string lights. They come with the little controller, so we're going to start at the top of the tree because we're going to have to hide that controller underneath that little green chunky wood ornament that's the stand now for our tree. So I just went downward and around and around and I kind of tucked it underneath where the little biscuit stuck out. And then when I got to the very bottom, I just put a couple little dots of hot glue here and there to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to guide my wire right underneath that little chunky round ornament and I'm going to glue it there with my hot glue. I have one of the little Totally Dazzled Jewels and a little piece of wire, actually, that probably came off of a ornament or something. I don't know. And I'm going to use my Starbond glue to glue it to my little jewel. And it's a beautiful little ribbon or a bow shape. And it's going to go right down in the top of my tree. Then I took some of those little tiny red bells that comes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to start gluing those all over my tree. And they fit perfectly, like in between where the little biscuits open up there. So you can just pop them here and there, and they look like the cutest little ornaments all over this tree. And one of my subscribers from Florida, Miss Wanda, sent me a bunch of buttons. And wouldn't you know that there was a little red bird in there, and I popped him right on the front of the tree. Then I took a couple of those little pine cones that come from the Dollar Tree and put those down on the bottom because I felt like it needed a little something else down there on the bottom area. Then I took some Mod Podge and added it thickly all over my tree and added a bunch of that faux snow 
all around my tree and I also added my extra fine diamond glitter that I get from Walmart and I just doused this tree y'all I put it on the tree I put it on the little red bird I even covered that little totally dazzled jewel that's on the top just anything that I wanted to sparkle which was pretty much everything and I just put it everywhere let me know what you think Stars brightly shining It's the night of the dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth Today, one of our neighbors had a great big tree that got struck by lightning and he cut it down into all kinds of shapes and pieces and threw it across the road in a big ditch. Well, this was just right down the road from our house and my husband and I went and got a bunch of the pieces because I can do a lot of DIYs with those. And that's basically how this DIY came to be. I sanded the inside lighter part of this round because I wanted it to be nice and smooth and I'm just going to take some Waverly white chalk paint and go all around the inside there being careful not to get it on the outside portion. And when I got closer to the edges I just used a smaller stiff brush so I could get close up by that line. And my friend Lori over at Milton's Daughter sent me this rice paper. I don't know if you guys knew that she has all kinds of craft supplies, including rice paper and stuff. It's by Decoupage Queen, and I love it. I'm going to use this liquid patina that's DIY that I also get from her, and we're going to put this on this wood round. Now, I'll leave all of Lori's information in the link down below and in the comments, so that way if you guys need any craft supplies, you can go to www.miltonsdaughter.com and use the code CRAFTYCATHY10 and get 10% off most of your supplies. So when I'm doing decoupage and rice paper, I do it in sections. You just put a little bit of the liquid patina down and then you lay the rice paper right down over it. The good thing about using rice paper over napkins is there's no wrinkles and I absolutely love, love using rice paper. When this was totally dry, I took my little finger sander that I get off of Amazon and I just sanded up and cleaned up the edges. Now these little finger sanders were out of stock for the longest time because every crafter absolutely loves these and they may be back in stock. But I do have these linked in my Amazon store. And I have this little silk screen stencil from Amazon. It says Merry Christmas. And that's the only part that we're going to use. It also has Christmas trees and snow on it. But I just wanted those words to complete this. So I just laid it down. And I tried to get it where it wouldn't be so sticky. Because rice paper can be pulled up. It's kind of like it's the little fibers of it can be pulled up. So I had to be very careful. And I just used the chalk paste. It's the Chalk Couture brand chalk paste. And it's kind of drying out on me. So I added a little bit of water. And then you just use that little tool that they send you. And you just go over the image that you want to be placed down. And I love these silk screen stencils because they come out perfect every time. The word Christmas on mine came out very faint because like I said, that rice paper can be pulled up, especially if you put something sticky over the top. And the back of these stencils are sticky and it kind of pulled up the little fibers and messed it up a little bit. But you could still see the word Christmas on there. So I just went over it with a Sharpie and you couldn't even really tell the difference when I had finished. I sealed in the top of this with that liquid patina one more time. I just went over it and glazed over it. And as I did that, I poured a little bit of my Christmassy glitter all over the top to just give it a little bit of a shine. I also added some of the faux snow, especially around the bottom where the little deer was standing and up around the sides. Hey, 
I took one of these little Christmas picks that I get from Walmart for $1.28 and I clipped off the very end of it where all the wires are and I just used my electric staple to staple it up and around the top part of this. And then I just added one of those little pre-made red and black buffalo check bows that I've been using that I get from Walmart and I added it kind of on the side to cover up where the little stem was. And I took three of those little small berries, they're called, from the Dollar Tree, and I stuck them underneath the pine. And of course, I had to use my signature button to go in the middle of my bow. I used a small fan brush that I have and some white Waverly chalk paint to brush over the whole log and all around that area of the pine and in the pine cone to make it look like fresh snow had just fallen all over the top of this. And then I added a little bit of Mod Podge all around the pine and around this log and I added some of the glitter and just a little bit more of that faux snow. Let me know what you think of this one. It's probably one of my favorites. smiles and the wishes and I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe tell me one thing is there anything that you're missing I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that and let's get into our last DIY I got this picture at the thrift store for two bucks and I'm going to paint it with the DIY color called Skeleton Key. It's kind of a gray blue color and for some reason I just think it looks perfect with snow and this is a snowy scene. So I gave this two coats to cover up the wording. While this was drying, I went out to my yard and I got a stick. Now you want to get a small thin stick that's kind of curled over at the top. You'll see why in just a second. So I put some hot glue down my little stick and a bunch on the, you know, the back of the picture so that we could just glue it there. And what we're going to do is the little scene where the Christmas tree is getting tilted over because the snowmen are trying to put the star on the top. It's so pretty. And I just cut up one of those little pine pick pieces that comes from the Dollar Tree. It's one of those, I think they're called like pine ties or something like that. And it's basically, it's got the wire in it and it's the, you know, looks like a little pine tree. And so I just cut it up into pieces that were varying, getting smaller as you go up this tree. And I just glued each one on there. But just keep in mind that this tree is supposed to look kind of sparse and you want to be able to see through those branches and see your little stick that you did put down. So don't try to make the tree look full or anything because I think it looks better when it is kind of a scraggly little Charlie Brown tree like this one. Once you have all the little pieces to your tree assembled and you let your glue dry completely, you're going to take a couple of the styrofoam balls. I got these at Dollar Tree. Now, I used eight. It depends on how many snowmen you want. I have four snowmen, and there's two little styrofoam balls per each snowman. I just painted these with some white chalk paint, and I added a little bit of my glitter on there so they could have that little frosty glow that I like at Christmas. I took a bunch of these little skewers that come from the Dollar Tree. They're just the regular size skewers. And I'm using my DIY paint in the color called Summer Crush. It's the perfect orange color. And you just want to paint the very tips of these because these are going to be the snowman's nose. I went out in my yard and I got a whole bunch of little twigs. And you're going to cut them off, the ones that have forks in them, so they look like this. Anything that's going to look like what you think that a snowman's arms and little hands are going to look like. So I got the pieces that had like forks in them because I thought that those would be perfect. And the smaller the twig is, really the better off I think that it looks. So I just went through and cut eight of these off because I have a total of four snowmen. Now we're going to start gluing. And this is how I did mine. 
I put a little glitter star that comes from the Dollar Tree, and then I put down one of the snowman's hands on the board because I wanted it to look like he's holding that star. And I started at the top just so that my snowman's head and body would be at the right size, if that makes sense. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now, some of these little snowmen are going to be holding the one up that's above him either by a hand or they're actually going to have their little head underneath his bottom and trying to hold him up by their head. But it's just going to be a little family of snowmen helping each other out get that star on the Christmas tree. And I moved my snowmen around where some of them you could see their face, some of them you could see more of the hand, just so you could get the whole feeling of what this picture is. And I think it's so sweet because all the little snowmen are trying to help this guy get the star on top of their little family's Christmas tree. And I had started off just going to be putting three snowmen on because I thought that that would probably look better. But then when I got down to the three snowmen, he was still way up in the air and the Christmas tree still went down. So I thought, well, I'll just add one more snowman. So do as many as you want because I think kind of the more you stick on there, the cuter it is because they're like bobbing all over the place trying to get that star on top of the tree. I hope that this makes sense the way I explained it. It's probably one of those deals where it's actually easier to see what I'm doing than for me to explain it and fumble all over it. <laughs> I just used my little Cricut weeding tool to poke a hole in the side there so I could put the stick for the arms. And I just put just a little dab of hot glue before I put that stick in there so that it would be nice and secure. And this is what the little noses look like after I clipped them off of the skewer. And I did the exact same thing for them. I'm going to poke a hole in the face with that little Cricut weeding tool. And then I'm just going to put a dab of glue on the end of that skewer before I pop it in for their nose. Then for the eyes and the mouth, I drew it on a couple of them. And I just used a very fine Sharpie and... I did their little mouths in the shape of an O and some of them just smiling. Then I just used a bunch of different sizes of buttons and a bunch of colors and I just stuck them on the tree to make sure that they were going to look right for my placement. And right here I'm just going back and gluing them on. And also in the middle of the tree is another one of those little birds, the little red birds. I have become like in love with birds over the past year. Anything that's bird decor, I like it. And I saw these at Walmart. They come, it's for $2.68 a pack of four. And it's got a little birdhouse and the bird. And I just think these are so sweet. And it's also what I used at the first DIY, the Memorial DIY. So I just finished going down the tree and putting the last of my little buttons on. And then I just went back with my little Sharpie and finished up the snowman, making the little holes in the, the nose area for their little noses and drawing on their eyes. And I am no artist. I just kind of drew most of my little snowmen with a little O type mouth where they're like, oh my goodness, because they can't hardly hold the little guy up above him and they're all tilting over to the side. But of course, it's going to be your project if you do this, so just do it the way you want to. On some of these, I had to turn it totally sideways to get the face on, so it may have been better to put the little faces on before I stuck the snowmen on, but I just thought of that later. Then I took a big button and a little half bead, and I glued these two things together to create like a little top hat looking thing that's going to go on the very top snowman, and I just glued that to his little head. Then I made one with some earmuffs, and the way I did that was take a tiny little sliver off of a pipe cleaner, and I put two little pom-poms, one on each side, and just curled the pipe cleaner to make it look like little earmuffs, and this is going to go on another little snowman, and I just glued it to his head too. Now to make the scarves, and the way that I did the scarves was I just took one of those little smaller ribbons from the Dollar Tree, and I cut just a tiny little piece off of it 
tiny, tiny little piece, and I would literally wrap it around the neck and just glue it down in the shape of what a scarf looks like when you put it around somebody's neck. And I went all the way up the snowman and did different ribbons on each snowman. Now, depending on how I had glued the head of the snowman down, some of these were a little tough to get underneath these snowmen, and I had to use my little Cricut tool to kind of push it through to get it to the other side so I could grab it to tie it. And I really didn't tie it. I just laid it in a way that a scarf looks like it's laid, and it was perfect that way. Then at the bottom, I just added a little bit of the Mod Podge to put down the faux snow because I found that it holds that faux snow a little bit better because it is so thick and goopy. And I put down the faux snow and the glitter. I added it all throughout the little tree and just all over this whole picture, all over the snowman. Everything was dusted with glitter when I was finished with this picture. And I must have accidentally hit slow motion instead of record for some reason. But anyways, all I did was take some of those little tiny presents that you get from the Dollar Tree and I glued three of them underneath the Christmas tree. Then I went to my Cricut so I could work on coming up with some kind of little sign for this. And for the life of me, I could not come up with the phrase that went good with this. My husband said, there's no place like home. But I didn't like that one because I didn't feel like it went with it. All I could come up with was where the treetops glisten. I was wanting to come up with something that had to do with family because they're a little family of snowmen trying to help that one get that star on the top. And I just couldn't come up with anything. So if y'all can come up with something a little bit better than this, just let me know. But I think it's cute because the other ones that I have seen on Pinterest don't have anything on them. And I just couldn't leave it plain without saying something. So I did wear the treetops in one font and then the word glisten, I did it going up and down and did it in a totally different font. And just wouldn't you know, I had to get into that liquid patina and put it all over those words. They were kind of a little tough to stick down to the board because of all the glitter that I had already put down. So I wanted to seal them in so they wouldn't come off at all. And I sealed them with that liquid patina and I figured while that's on there, I might as well add just a little bit more glitter and a little bit more snow. So I added more glitter all over the picture and then I put snow kind of going up the side of the word glisten and then I thought that's cute. So then I added it up the other side and I hope you like this one guys. I think it's so sweet. All the children above all Then you know it's Christmas Santa's on his way. If y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you and I love you all so much. If you would, just continue to say a little prayer for our family, especially my 14-year-old. She's And I guess that's all for now. I will talk to you guys very soon, and I will see you on Friday. I love you each and every one, and God bless you and your family.